All right, so anyway, the topic today is uh, progress, not perfection. And quickly it comes to mind that, I don't know if you're hurting playing cards. They have what they call being on tilt. I don't know if anybody ever, I guess it could be in other things too, but it's called being on tilt. And what happens is when people play cards and they start losing, all of a sudden they get crazy and say, what the heck, I'm going to just put all my money in or not bet correctly, or whatever it is. I'm sure other games or whatever it is, the same thing. But a lot of times they refer to being on tilt uh, with the cards being off balance. So I started to realize about slips, that's directly related to progress, not perfection. And to me, and many times I, we talk about here that a person had a slip and then you don't hear from them for a year or two. So we could shortcut all of that and what we could do is have a slip and then restart. I love the phrase restart the day or the next day, whatever it is. So we can have a different perception towards our ups and downs. Again, very successful people, they may have something that doesn't work out right, but what they do is to get back on their feet and just go ahead and move ahead. And that's how they become successful. So basically, we, we want to become successful in our addiction, right? We want to be able to, you know, stop our compulsion. I use compulsion because it could be compulsive overeating or undereating or whatever it is, anorexia, all of these different things. It's a compulsion. Uh, same with any other things with uh, drug addiction, you know, food addiction is the same thing. So next time you you have like you feel as you, you had like a binge or ate too much or didn't eat enough or whatever your thinking is and whatever, you can relate it to anything in life. We can start the day over. And what that I mean is we get out of the guilt, shame and remorse and just look at it. Because in all of these things, like in playing cards, it's the same thing because Sometimes online I play a little bit and, and what happens is that when people start to lose, all of a sudden they just fall apart. The same with our addiction. And, and I, I'd have to say in a lot of meetings I went to, they always say, we got to go to day one. And when somebody would come in and they, oh, they were so miserable and depressed. Oh, I had an extra food last night or whatever the compulsion is. And it was like they, they fell apart. But people who, uh, again, um, People who do successful things and you want to be successful in this, they don't look at it that way. They look at it as a challenge. And you can actually bring you closer. Say, oh, I'm going to learn from this. Oh, I had this slip and now it brings me closer to prayer, meditation, God, or whatever. We, we work in these 12-step programs, my higher power, realizing I can't do it and laughing at it. And say, okay, I'm going to have my thinking now and just move on. If you liked the video so far, press the like and subscribe button. So life is like that. I use sometimes a person on a surfboard. If they're too rigid, they're going to fall down. But, up, you know, life is like ups and downs. And so our addictions are going to be ups and downs. And that's where progress, not perfection, progress, not perfection comes in. And I thought of a, a prayer on page um, 86. Bottom of 86, we have the um, for, on awakening for today. And throughout the day, the morning prayer, whatever, pay, go to page 86. If you do have the big book, if not, just listen. Let me get to it myself. On the bottom of the page, in thinking about our day, we face indecision. We may not be able to determine which course to take. Here we ask God for inspiration, intuitive thought or decision. We relax and take it easy. We don't struggle. We are often surprised how the right answer comes after we tried this for a while. What used to be a, a hunch or occasional inspiration gradually becomes working part of the mind. So instead of getting into the ego, the self, the guilt, the shame, remorse, we can get into God consciousness and revert back out of the self and into this higher way of thinking. And the higher way of thinking tells us, look, we made a mistake. It, you know, we, we're not the mistake and it's in the past. It's, we're, you know, being eternal present. So all these things, the spiritual awakening towards food all deals with the 12 steps for me because the spiritual awakening is realizing the eternal present. So if you have this food addiction and you're upset about what you did or you went 100 days and you, you, you ate perfectly what you thought was a perfect way of, of going towards your addiction and then one day you have a slip. You don't have to go out for two years. We always say, what happened to so-and-so? He was here for a year and then we didn't hear from him. Two years later, the person comes back and they said, yeah, yeah, two years ago I had a slip. It doesn't have to be that way. All day long you could have back and forth, ups and downs. And that's the way life is. 
We always, you know, perfection comes actually from the ego, pride being number one, right? The ego, pride, the, the ego can't handle that. We didn't do things 100% correctly. The ego says, oh man, I really screwed up. We get remorse, shame, and guilt about the past. Sometimes people think it's something that happened 30 years ago and they're sitting there still pondering on it. So it could be a new creation becoming what's called reborn on page 63 before the third step prayer when we get out of the bondage of self. So the food is addiction is no different. Alcohol, drug addiction, whatever it is, we can start anew. And one more thing I wanted to read. On the bottom of page 87, actually, on the very bottom, as we go through the day, we pause. When agitated, doubtful. Here we go, agitated, doubtful. All of a sudden, we get very doubtful. I, I can't do this. I'm, I'm terrible. I'm the worst person in the world, and I'm hopeless. <laughs> That's self-pity, remorse, shame, and guilt, defects of character, brought on by the ego, the pride being number one. We ask for the right thought or decision or action. So it's saying here, we can't think our way out of this mess. We're trying to, oh, I'll do better next time. Look what I did really bad. All we do is we go straight to a higher consciousness and we can relieve us of sins of the past and anxiety about the future. It's, you know, it's interesting because I started to realize the direct relationship here to the 12 steps. I, I didn't understand that. And I always thought, well, if I uh, controlled it or I went to these and I heard somebody speak about the uh, big food corporations, diet corporations, they'll tell you how to do it. And you'll, you'll read the self-help books on dieting. And, you know, so what we do is we have a better way because actually intuitive thought means, believe me, God created us to know how much to eat and when to eat. We just distort it. Our distorting thinking, our allergy to body, a lot of it comes in from listening to the commercials and believing what they tell us, that our, our, our answer is, if our solution is indulging in alcohol, drugs, or food, or, or it could be anything, right? Sex, whatever it is, that that's going to money, success. So, and then co we constantly remind on bottom page eighty seven ourselves we are no longer running the show. Step one, and humbly saying to ourselves many times a day, "Thy will be done." So, is it God's will or our spiritual higher powers' will when we're more shame and guilt about what we did five minutes ago, yesterday, or thirty years ago? We are creating perfection. We are then in much less danger of excitement, fear, anger, worry, self-pity, or foolish decisions. Foolish decisions. Well, listen, you start to think, I went a whole year and I, didn't, and I was perfect. And, and tonight I had a little extra of, uh, indulged in my drug of choice. So the foolish decision is that you're deciding, man, it's, it's hopeless. I'm hopeless and, and remorse and shame, which... Actually, I have to say, when I went to a lot of meetings, they put that into my head because you got to start at day one. To me, it's like I have 100 days with one, maybe one slip. That's what I look at it. I, what, what do you mean? And then we became much more efficient, efficient in our thinking. We do not tire so easily for we are not burning up energy foolishly. We are, did not when we were trying to arrange life to suit ourselves. If you liked the video so far, press the like and subscribe button. So we let God, further down on page 88, discipline us in the simple way we have just outlined. You know, people have different conceptions about God, higher power, and a book that says, as you understand. But I, I realize that my higher sense, my higher consciousness is, is there. And it's, it's, you know, we have a, per, you know, body physically is like perfection. Our mind is in perfection. It's just when we get in and we distort it. Right? We, we're, we're the ones, we, the defects of character are all distorting our, our natural thinking. And distortion of it is saying, well, I got a better way. I'm going to make something, things of the flesh, the seeing, the taste, the smell, has all related to food. I'm going to make that my higher power. Instead of getting sent to relaxing prayer meditation, step 11. I'm telling you, it's all, the food, my diet program is all in these 12 steps. I needed perception change towards life. I had to think of it differently. I, I needed progress, not, not perfection. But my life, I grew up, well, if you weren't perfect, if you didn't do better than everybody else, if you didn't do this, you didn't do that, that, uh, that you, you weren't any good. And then when people wonder, why do they get depressed and upset about life? Because the expectations, expectations and resentments are ready to happen. And I heard desire is the cause of all suffering. So get out of self-will. 
let go, surrender. The whole program is about letting go. You know, we we're talking about last week. If you missed last week, it's about letting go. And if you can't make it on, on this coming week, it's about letting go. I don't know what else to say. We Last week, you know, our, our, our topic was simple but not easy. And, uh, you know, um, actually, you know, I have something here. I, I didn't know whether I was going to do or not, but maybe I'll do it. Let me share my screen. This actually is a prayer for food addict. It's from one of these food addiction programs. But the, the person who wrote it, they don't know it's a... They couldn't anonymous. They didn't. They didn't even know really. What do you call it? They, they didn't know who it is. But in there, it describes uh, a way to approach us in the way we're talking about here, and what a higher power. The whole program is about finding a higher power. Uh, we'll read it. God, today is a new day for me. Directly related to what we're talking about here, right? New day. Start the day over. One day at a time. Did you ever hear that? <laughs> That's all we hear. But do we apply it? With you, it can be a day of abstinence. With you, I can handle anything. I ask for your protection in case sometime during the day my desire to eat compulsively becomes stronger to, than my desire to abstain. I ask for your protection today from anyone or anything that could interfere with my abstinence. I know that I am powerless over food and that my life can become unmanageable again. I believe you will relieve me with compulsion, restore me to sanity. Please help me to know your will for me today and give me the willingness to carry it out. I turn my will and my life over to you. Please guide me through another day of abstinence. God, I need you. Amen. So if you want to find that, just put in Google uh, a prayer of abstinence. What is it? Abstinence prayer of a food addict. And you'll find it there. And as it says on the bottom here, source unknown.